This program is brought to you by Emory University. I'll always remember the look on people's faces when we started with the Bach Chorale and everybody was appreciative. And then when the guitar came in and Will started singing the lyrics and it dawned upon people that we were doing this Paul Simon tune, the look of joy and recognition and there was kind of like a collective sort of... <sighs> it's a very powerful thing when you bring a song that you might hear on the radio into another setting and set it in a different way and people hear it differently and they connect to the song in a different way than they would hear it if they were listening to it on the radio. I'm the chorus director at a local synagogue congregation, Beit Haverim, here in Atlanta. And here's the time I've been staying. And many and a few years ago, we had um, the opportunity to uh, perform one of Paul Simon's songs in a service. And this was also in 2010, which was kind of the heart of the recession. And so American Tune just kind of popped in my head. And we, we listened to it and realized how well it fit with what we were trying to do. And also how much it sort of spoke to um, a lot of the people in our choir and a lot of the people in our congregation, a lot of people in the community. It was indeed at a time when, when uh, the recession and, uh, was difficult and people were having so many challenges. And at the same time we have our dreams and we have um, the, the things that lift us up and carry us, us through and we don't expect to be bon vivant the whole time and that's okay. Still you don't expect to be bright and bon vivant so far. So far Musically, it was an interesting fit as well. I knew that he based that song on uh, what I thought was a Bach tune. Um, it turns out Bach borrowed it too. Uh, it was actually a 16th century folk song uh, about lost love that Bach, as so many great composers do, reappropriated and uh, turned it into a hymn, and then he set it in St. Matthew's Passion. It resonates very much with the Jewish story of so many different layers upon layers upon layers. Um, so here Paul Simon finds this tune um, and sets it, and we take it, and Will sets it, and so it feels like we're part of a line of creative energy. And this particular piece is so amazing because of the way that it resonates for people personally because it's about my story and then it's also about my neighbor's story and it's also about my country's story. American Tune was my song. I lived with my grandparents so that I could graduate with my class in Neil Armstrong High School. So every day I would go to school and walk past a smiling portrait of the man who walked on the moon. The only way we had to play records in my grandparents' house was this gigantic cabinet with two speakers, a big Victrola player that you had to be very careful about dropping a needle onto the vinyl. And I had been playing that album quite a bit. And my grandfather came into the room as American Tune was playing and he said, you know, this is my song. And I said, well, your song, it's my song. Tell me why it's your song. So he said, well, I was born in 1912. I helped my grandfather deliver coal in a horse-drawn cart. I've seen the advent of the automobile, the electric train, the telephone, mass communications, airplanes, all of the progress that's happened in this world. And I've seen bad politics, and I've seen good politics. I've seen prosperity and I've seen the worst kind of depression. And I've seen video of the flag on the moon. Just imagine what it's going to be like for you. He said, you're this far down the journey. I'm looking back down at you and smiling reassuringly. But every time I hear that song, every time we sing that song, I think of him, you know, looking back down at that journey and smiling. So that beautiful lift, you know, with my soul rising, 
and it does, it does. If I never really cared to define what a soul was, I can feel it, it's not an intellectual thing. And when, we're, when the harmonies are coming out, we are just, we are, it's so uplifted. And then we take the spiritual journey. Yeah, we can see ourselves. We're looking down on ourselves. We have the perspective of God, or perspective of the skies, perspective of the entire world. And then he takes us on this beautiful journey. Part of the journey is, is to begin in disillusionment, to walk into a sense of hope, to know that you're carrying the burden of your life's pain with you as you're walking into this and then to have um, the knowledge and awareness that it's not going to be easy. Some sounds endure, and I feel that the sounds of song and the sounds of our feeling that come from singing this beautiful song will endure. There's something incredibly unique and exclusively human about raising our voices in song together. And when we as a choir sing together, I see people being moved by what we do. I, I feel incredibly humbled and honored. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.